ladies and gentlemen, Willie Hunter! behind the stage. Everyone give it up for him. While he was doing that now, the girl was flopping out his penis, so. Yeah, he pulled out his penis and started flopping it on him while he was doing the announcement, so. It's a little inside stuff for you right there. That's, in that's industry stuff. I don't know if you guys are ready for that. Welcome. Thanks for coming tonight. Welcome to my show, The Willie Hunter Show. Fantastic guest, Bill Burris, why most of you guys are here tonight. Uh, a little bit about myself. Uh, I, I feel like I'm becoming the black man I've always wanted to be. <laughs> like a light Obama. <laughs> Not white, light. I feel like I'm just like, I've looked up to him for, uh, for the past uh, several years. I really like him. What I don't think a lot of people know is I don't think Barack Obama really cares that much. Oh, Jesus Christ, Earl, you scared me there. I'm in the middle of something groundbreaking. Well, I just had a black guy come up from behind me and I got scared, so I thought I'd make it even. Great humor. What was I talking about? Barack Obama, that's what I was talking about. Yeah, yeah. So, How do you feel about Barack Obama? I mean, you know, I voted for uh, Lyndon LaRouche, so I didn't really... Who is that? Uh, some French white guy. <laughs> Can he, he can't run for president, he's French. Yeah, but he's born in America. It's like oh, some wacky rules. All right. <laughs> what I was saying is, I think that uh, Barack Obama really doesn't like Bill Clinton at all. And yeah, fact about it, because Bill Clinton, better president. You guys agree with me on that? Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, cooler. He's just a lot cooler than him. I feel like Barack's very uptight. You know, Bill Clinton's very loose. I think they should have a sitcom together. <laughs> Barry and Bill, that's what I would call it. Yeah, Barack's very uptight. Bill Clinton's all Hawaiian t-shirts and thumbs. That's all he does. <laughs> we start out, Barack was having a nice day. He just came from work in the White House, about to sit down and watch sports center. Michelle walks in and goes, Hey, Barry, you might want to put on a nice shirt today. Bill's coming over today. Bill's coming over. Before he sits down to have a you know, good viewing, he pops up and he goes, uh, Wait a minute. Uh, hold up. <laughs> well, you know, I don't like Bill. I don't know why I invite him over here. He just talks too much. That's all he does. He just talks. You know, last week he came over here and helped himself to a slice of cake. Who does that in another man's house? <laughs> we're on the Super Bowl last year. We're, we're watching a great game. You know, he comes in here and he's talking about Madonna. No one cares about Madonna. <laughs> well, Tom Brady's about to win this shit. Shut up. <laughs> he's a menace to society. And how he became president, I don't know. And I won't say one good thing about him. Uh, Orlando's on a really good joint. <laughs> Barry and Bill, everyone, they'll be coming on NBC right after Whitney. Uh, that sounds more for uh, Spike TV, I'd say. Well, I think that's right on NBC. They need a show. Well, they need some help, no doubt about it. <laughs> <laughs> ah, this is fantastic. Uh, well, I think we're ready to start the show. I do. Uh, with that said, we're going to go to a quick commercial break and we're going to bring out our first guest, our only guest, Bill Burr, everyone. All right, Bill Burr. Bill Burr. Thank you for watching the Willie Hunter Show holiday special. Uh, the entire episode is brought to you commercial free by Philosophia Cigarillo. Happy holidays! And we're back for a commercial break, everyone. Welcome back. We're here with our guest, Bill Burr. How are you? How's it going? How are you? How's it going? Oh, thank you for being here, Bill. I, did you do anything earlier before you got here? Well, what do you mean, thank you for being here? You know why I'm here. I know you why. You took that girl's hula hoop and you fucking threw it in the street. <laughs> to curse on this. Sorry. You can say whatever you want. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. There was some girl using a hula hoop. But this is part one, because you're here for another show, too. What do you mean I'm here for another show? You promised me two shows. I the one. It's a two-picture deal, baby. Oh, okay. All right, I'll be back here. <laughs> <laughs> show business, You gotta do something else. No, there was some girl, she was just using a hula hoop to a point where it was just annoying. 
And he asked me to do the show. And I was like, tell you what, if you take her hula hoop and throw it in traffic on Sunset Boulevard, I will do it. And he goes, I, he goes, I'll do it. I go, no, you won't. And he just started staring at me. He goes, you don't think I'm going to do it? Yeah, I look right in your eyes. Right, man. You, you had no clean eyes. You had your you game face on. I, I, I called you bluff. I go, yeah, I know. And you walked right over to her. And you just stared at her. It was like watching two kids in like a sandbox where the bigger kid takes the toy. Like he just stared at her and she just stopped. And he just took it from her. She was just looking at him. And then he just walked over and threw it in traffic. I, I, I took it from her, from, her, from her waist. Like I pulled it over her head. And she just stood there and took it over and I threw it in traffic. Yeah. But we made it, it so was cool. most adorable. It was like the most adorable mugging I ever saw. <laughs> This guy, I gotta do a show. But the yeah. coolest part was I wanted to seem cool after it, so right after I did, I walked back to you. I walked over to the bar and did a shot. It worked. <laughs> <laughs> it worked. I was like, Willie is a cool dude. <laughs> yes. And there you go. That's the backstory. Oh. Right, there's so many questions I'm gonna ask you, and I don't want to ask the generic questions about your comedy and, and all this. I mean, I got a couple. But the first thing, I Wikipedia you, and like everyone else did, and I saw left handed. That was I don't know why this on your Wikipedia page. Uh, I know that. Well, Wikipedia knows it. Are you left-handed? Yeah, I write left. I write left-handed. And you're five foot ten. This is all from Wikipedia, by the way. Okay, you're two for two. All right. Hey, uh, you're up three for three. You didn't, you didn't even need to interview me. I don't need to be here. Well, just this, well, this show that you should have just filled my uh, Wikipedia page. <laughs> But the thing was, I also found that you were a dental hygienist for him. That is not true. That is not true. No. That's not true at all. That is not true at all. You never worked in a dentist's office. That's a different question. I did not. Uh, I was not a hygienist. Somebody said that about me. Started that horrible rumor. And I've tried to get it expunged from my record for years now. I was a dental assistant. My dad's a dentist. And I needed a job. I just stood there and I handed him the shit. Well, uh, I took people's teeth out. <laughs> so hence, like, a bloody mouth doesn't freak me out. Because I've just seen it so many times. It's weird. But then if somebody, like, you know, if their fucking arm gets chopped off, it's gross to me. Do you find yourself looking at people's teeth all the time? Yeah. I definitely do. I'll be out to class two. He's got a class three. Like, Bruce, Bruce Springsteen has got a class three. Class, 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 class three, class three, it's an underbite. Which people should tell you. Born in the U.S. That's an underbite. Uh, yeah, that's if you like. Class two is what you're supposed to have. Cla class one is if it's it's a total overbite. I'm going back like fucking twenty years. Yeah, that's, that's like I'm like this here. And you want to come back to class two like this, and then Bruce Springsteen, he's got the underbite, but he doesn't fix it because I think it would fuck with the sound. Yeah, you know what the singers do? Hard. They don't want to get a nose job, like Babs. Right. Did you have a joke about it? I mean, because you did that before you started doing stand-up comedy as a dental assistant. Yep. Uh, did, you, did you try to make a joke about that at all? I actually brought a prop in from work, and I, I, would, I would close my act by opening five minutes. We had this shit, like when you were drilling somebody's tooth, like stuff would come flying out. It was disgusting, so they basically had like a welder's mask, but it was plastic. So I was going to do this whole bit about how I worked there during the day. And I didn't have any, I was so new as a comic, I didn't have any joke for the prop. So I would just be like, my job sucks so bad, I have to wear this. And I'd put it on, and the crowd would be like anticipating a joke. And I wouldn't tell one, and then I'd just be like, behind the mask, be like, thanks a lot everybody, you look great. And I was, and I was so stupid, and I carried it in this little stupid duffel bag up on the stage. It was so pointless. It was like it was like a half second joke in like a six minute set. How long you one, day, one day it dawned on me. I finally said to another comic who was more experienced, going, you know what? I just realized this is like I'm basically saying I'm so not funny. I need to bring shit on stage to help me out. And then he looked at me like, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh fuck, I'm that guy. Everybody's been saying that about me. I learned that lesson in the Kowloon Chinese restaurant on Route 1, way back in 19. How long did you tell that joke? Was it months, weeks, days? Oh, months. Months. That was my go-to lull to end my set. A little duffel bag. Well, you know that day when you first started as a comic, like, you just stick with shit because you don't know. You don't know what killing is. You just know what not bombing is. So yeah. it, didn't, it didn't bomb, but it wasn't working. I was just glad at that point. I was just happy at that point. 
that I hadn't totally embarrassed myself, so it was still considered like a victory. Yeah. So I had to like clean. Did you get bored with that, man? You just come on. Yeah. I still tell the same jokes. Can I buy that joke on me? No, I'll sell it too. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, when we're getting to that now, we're moving up forward to uh, the whole Philadelphia incident. Yeah. The movie? No, no. Yeah. I, I thought that would make me hit the movie. Yeah, that was years ago. Years ago. That's a good yeah. movie. What are you going to bring up that Charlie bit my finger? These people, they want, they want shit immediately. Everyone has seen that. Yeah. I, well, I was at this point, people look at that Philly video and they're just writing fate. You know? I was trying to say fake. I don't know why it came out as fate. <laughs> it was fate for you to be there. The, the one thing that I noticed when you were like, and two more minutes, and I will be selling merch after this. Uh, did you sell merch after that? No, I didn't you have merch. Audit, I, didn't. I didn't know. I, did go to, I didn't actually have merch. I just needed <laughs> something obnoxious to say to them. And you told them they all so I, you know, I, I, stood at, I stood at the table afterwards. I stood at the table afterwards, but you know, I had a fucking headache. <laughs> and I was nervous about when it would come. I knew comic would see, comics would see it, and hopefully they would think it was funny. But I, I just thought, you know, regular people would look at it, see me on stage getting booed. You know, I was just like, all right, well, this might suck for a little bit if people think that this is what they should do with my shows, because that's what they did. Then the tour went to Cleveland after that, and I knew I shouldn't have went on stage, but I went anyways out of loyalty to the show. And I tried to go on earlier, and they still put me on late. And the second I walked out, everyone started booing me just so I would shit all over Cleveland. <laughs> and I'm like, look, I'm not just going to do this. You're going to pretend to boo me, then I'm going to pretend to get mad. This is fucking stupid. And they didn't care. They oh, just kept booing me, and I walked off. I feel like people try to push you because they, they like that, that angst or that, that anger you have. I guess they want to see it, so people try to poke at you. Sometimes. Yeah, and you look at like yells at everyone. You that suck. Would, that would be my older brother. That's what he used to do. <laughs> he used to just argue the opposite side of everything just to get me going. And then I get so fucking mad in the end when I realize that he didn't even have any passion for what he was saying. It was just enjoyment for him. No, then we would get into like a massive fist fight. Fist fight? Yeah. You and your brother just yeah. fighting it out? Blood and everything? No, not blood. Because my dad worked in a dental office, so then he would... We try to keep it. We beat each other like a guy would beat his wife. If we kept it in between here and here, we're trying to keep the bruises. That's how it works. I'm not advocating it. But uh, we try to get punched in the head. You try to do the side of the head. This is my dad's medical background. It was just, it was everything. There was no black eyes. It was like a hematoma. It's a fucking hematoma. Christ, he could lose his eye. I had a patient the other day. It was always, that was the formula. Whatever you did, he had a patient the other day, did exactly what you just did, and the kid died. So that was it. That's why I never saw the Nutcracker. I saw it a few times. I never saw any of that shit. We could never go on field trips, because, ah, Christ, the bus driver gets drunk, you go down the fucking cliff. He just didn't want to deal with... My dad was really antisocial. He just didn't want you involved in activities because then he'd have to drive there and pick you up and talk to other parents. And I always hated that about him. And then the other day, my girl got me, uh, we went and did a pasta cooking class. That sounds fun. It was fun. It actually was a, it was a great fucking time. And you and other, other couples there too, right? Other couples. And we walked in. I just want to learn how to make it, but then they wanted to go around the room first. Okay, everybody say your name. How you found out about the class, and what was the last kick-ass meal that you had, that's what she said. Immediately, I wanted to stick my head in the pasta making machine and just fucking end it. I didn't want to do it. So I don't care where people's from. Just start stirring the eggs into the flour. Show me how the magic's done here. Hold, hold that inks for a moment. We're going to take another commercial break real quick. We're going to take a commercial break. We'll be back with Bill Burr, everyone. All right. Αυτοί οι σιγάρος είναι το μεγάλες και το όλο σιγάρος. Okay, δεν είναι κρεβάτης, δεν είναι πεπονής, δεν είναι ε, κρεβατοκάμαρα. Όχι, όχι, όχι. Αυτή είναι το μεγάλε μαλάκα. Δεν είναι μπούτσο, δεν είναι ε, ε, κουμπουλόι και το αμερικανός και το 
Η Γερμανία δεν μου λέει τίποτα. Αυτή είναι το Βούτσο. Ξέρεις, ξέρεις ο δεν ξέρεις. Τι μαλάκα εσύ είναι αυτό. Ε, ο, ο, ε, πρέπει να πάμε χορέψουμε μαλάκα. Όχι δεν πρέπει να πάμε χορέψουμε μαλάκα. Σκύλο γύρω μαλάκα. Και το αυτή. Ατσε. Do the comedies on there? Yeah. Absolutely, absolutely. I think I think Rick Flair is the uh, one of the funniest. The nature boy. Oh, yeah, one of the funniest men who's ever been, ever picked up a microphone. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's fantastic. No, he, got, he did it. Uh, I was he... born, I was born with a golden spoon in my mouth. When he tells that guy, takes off his loafer. Oh, it's like yeah. a it's like a purple loafer with like gold inlays. And he holds it up to this white trash dude who looks like he worked in a mine his whole life. And he goes, my shoes cost more than your house. And he yelled it. But what made it so funny is if you looked at the guy, it was probably true. I just, there's something so appealing about that act that he would go out. Has he came to any of your shows? No. Uh, no, no, I mean, I'm only getting better. How would you feel? You're on stage and you're just doing your thing and Ric Flair's sitting in the front. I would be freaking out. If I ever made that guy laugh, it would be the greatest thing ever. He, to me, other than the, 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 the beating he took from his body, that seems brutal, but like, his act, his persona seems so much fun that you just go in to a, like a, whatever, to an arena of, of broke people who are struggling and you just tell them how much money you have and, and how privileged your childhood was and why their life sucks and then you hold up all your rich stuff in their face. It's just like, when would that ever get old? That's just the funniest fucking thing ever. It just looked like so much fun. And then your big challenge every week is how do I top that annoying thing with something more annoying? They're amazing. Like The Rock was another guy who was just like absolutely prolific if you watched him every week in wrestling. He always added to his shit. Yeah. So he never got like, you could, you know, he had his classics and then he would add a little bit more to When he got into the Poutine pie, that's when I was like, okay, this is getting ridiculous. Uh, he never got ridiculous. I think that was <laughs> He lived up to the hype. He was the most electrifying man in entertainment sports. Without a doubt. Without a doubt. Do you think uh, Ric Flair ever did any cocaine? No, not at all. I think uh, that was all just part of his persona. I think he's a choir boy. <laughs> what kind of fucking asshole would say that they think that, that he did that? Well, he seemed a little hyped up in some of those clips. He's a performer. Uh, he's bringing his A-game. Well, what are you shitting on him for? I like Rick Flair. I like how you love Rick Flair so much. Well, why are you bringing up that TMZ shit? Who, care? Who cares what he did? I, you know, when the fucking mic got turned on, he delivered. That's <laughs> He's still alive. So he, he obviously knew when to say when then, right? Jesus Christ. Unreal. I mean, he, I just got done saying how much I liked him. Why would he say something like that? He likes him too. I love him. But you gotta get the real stuff, though, you know? You can't just be all fantasy about it. You gotta know the real stuff about it. Well, this is being filmed. We're sitting in a fucking bar. All That's right, we don't want to piss shit. off yeah. Red Flair. Jesus Christ. <laughs> you know, most wrestlers, those old guys like that, they're doing stand-up now. Yeah, well, Roddy, I mean, they, Roddy, they, Roddy, technically, they, they technically they were anyway. Like, that shit when you come out on the mic. Yeah. And they were riffing. Like, Rick Flair said, he goes, they, did you people write that stuff? He goes, nah. He goes, I came up with half that shit. On the, on the cab ride over from the airport. And that's just like, I don't know, like, as a performer, that's great. Like, you're just like, oh, you know, I'm, I'm gonna say that, or I'm, gonna, I'm thinking about that, I'm gonna talk about that shit. And he would just come, he just, let me tell you something, and he just start going, it was amazing. Luger, let me tell you something! <laughs> Woo! 
I just want to get that out. Yeah, you have to get it up. <laughs> have you ever put someone in the figure for a leg walk? No, but this dude, uh, Rob Swedenberg, when I was in fourth grade, put me in it. And I allowed him because I wanted to learn how to do it. It's the first time I, <laughs> the first time I, I, I threw out my, my back because he wouldn't let it go and everyone was freaking out that it was actually hurting me. So he was feeding off the crowd's energy. He wouldn't, he wouldn't let me out of it. Remember, we had our big winter coats on and I was trying to get up. I was trying to get up and I fucked up my back and ever since then it's been messed up. <laughs> oh, and then I went up I think I did it to my little brother. <laughs> Speaking of sports entertainment, Earl has his hockey jersey on. Uh, you're a hockey fan, obviously. You play hockey. You're out there in skates playing. No, I, I try. I try. I just, you know, I'm, I'm upper level horrible. Not even like lower mediocre. I can, skate, I can skate okay, but the second you give me the puck, I'm fucked. I compare it to like texting while driving. That's basically it. Earl loves hockey stuff. so much that he buys his jersey off the players. Yeah, like this was game worn by the guy, you know. Fire. That's creepy. <laughs> I don't want that. I can see if you're a little kid, you know what I mean? Like, I actually have that rule, like, I, occasionally I'll get a jersey, but I'm not getting a jersey of anybody who's playing now. Because that person's like half my age. That's, when, I was, when I was a kid, they were like gods. Like, wow, and maybe someday I could play in the NFL. And now that dream didn't happen, so, you know, fuck him. <laughs> what are we, dating? You know? It is, it is Just sit and wear your Letterman jacket. I think that that should make fans. You should wear it the actual size of the guy so you look like some chick and you're gonna pull up the sleeves. <laughs> Gets a little peck on your neck. Would you say you're like a, like a hardcore sports fan? Like, you take it too serious? I was. I, I don't do that anymore. But uh, but also, you know... Have you got any fights over there? A fan of Boston sports. You know, we've won a title in all four major sports in the last ten years, so I'm good. It's like walking away from Stop. the blackjack table. I'm good. You got to call it a night. Did you ever get in like fist fights with someone because you, you know someone's talking? Fist fights like this? Well, that's how I fight. Um, no, no, I never, I never took it to that level. No, I didn't. I, I fought right up to seventh grade, and everybody seemed to hit puberty but me. And then all of a sudden, I, I, I you know, my weight class like didn't exist in my grade. So that's when I had to start being work, ramp up the funny. You know, survival of the fist? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I had a couple of, you know, threw a couple of fucking sucker punches. One of those 20 on 20 fights and you're on the outskirts. All right, I threw my one. I was more like that guy, what was it, Bobby in Saturday Night Fever? Where were you guys? I was looking for you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you I, know, I, I just, you know, I, I, you know, I don't know what was more scary to me, like getting the shit kicked out of you or actually doing some fucking damage, because I know I have a lot of rage in me, so why would you want to do, you know, it's like you want to do it, but then if you did it, you'd feel fucking horrible, and then God forbid you meet somebody who's evil. I just, all this shit, my, times my brother beat the shit out of me, like I thought how bad what he did to me, it's but at least, you know, dad's coming home, so he, he, there's a, there's a line he can't cross, and then he went out in public, I just, that really psyched me out, it's like, well, dad's not coming home, I don't fucking know this guy, he could just keep going. <laughs> what am I going to be laying on the ground? Big pumpkin head? I don't I want that to happen. Well, we're going to wrap it up here. And I, had <laughs> I felt like it went somewhere. Uh, you know, we had a lot of good stuff there uh, still we left. Stuff, but we got so far into the Ric Flair thing because uh, that's huge for me. Uh, I find it absolutely hilarious because I'm a huge sport uh, wrestling fan. Uh, we're we're going we're gonna to get sad a little bit. I mean, it's not going to get sad talk about it. then your friend Patrice O'Neill passed away. Who died? Now how is this not gonna get sad? <laughs> I look like in the morning you tell me a great story on the triumph. You know like that one guy with the patch in 300, you come in and save the day, you get like this, and we won't fight. No, no, actually well, the great thing about Patrice is uh, we organized a benefit for him in uh, New York City to honor him and uh, raise money for his mom and his, uh, his wife. So we got that going on and uh, tickets sold out in like 24 hours. Which was a great thing, and uh, talking to his mom the other day, it's the first time I really, she actually sounded happy since the whole mess started, but uh, if you guys don't know who Patrice is, that's um, hands down, on stage and off stage, that's the funniest fucking dude I've ever met, and I've never met anybody any close to him, so, uh, yeah. When you were with him, do you feel like you were like walking on eggshells because you knew he was going to come back with something quick every time, or? No, we used to try and gang up on him, we used to have like... 
We would literally like four on one, four comics on one, and he would just like lay back, let you get your things in, and then he, he just would destroy you. I beat him once. I beat him once in 20 years using his techniques against him on a three-way phone call with him, Bobby Kelly, and me. Bobby Kelly was in my apartment and threw out this old fucking couch I had from my dad's original dental office. It was a hunk of shit with this floral pattern, and I couldn't get myself to throw it out because it was sentimental to me. So Bobby threw it out. I said, thank God he threw it out. It was sentimental. So the two of them called me up to trash me for using the word sentimental. Like, that's what comics do. Oh, he showed a weakness. Let's fucking devour him. So I somehow turned it around that Patrice is Bobby's bitch. And, like, Bobby hired him to fucking... I can't remember what I did. But all I know is I somehow... I don't know. It's like, you know when they, you go to a basketball game, they pull some fat fuck out of the crowd? Hey, you hit a half-court shot. You get a key that might open the Yugo, right? And somehow he hits the shot. That's what happened. Somehow, I was in the zone. It was the middle of the day. No, Patrice, he probably just woke up and I somehow beat him. And he got fucking mad. He got mad. He wouldn't, he wouldn't call, he wouldn't pick up when I, he wouldn't talk to me for like three days. So my record against him was probably one in about 8,760. He fucking destroyed me. But honestly, man, I'm t it's such a fucking shame. It's really, I gotta tell you, it's, it's a void. Like, it's a void like I've never experienced beyond him just being a friend, but that was the guy that when, you know, I just imagined that I was gonna be, like, the benchmark. He was the benchmark, so anytime I would be, you know, like when Elf in the Room was coming out, I was fucking nervous. I'm like, oh God, how, how much is this guy gonna blow me out of the water? How far behind am I gonna be? So, uh... Like a friendly competition. Uh, did yeah, he see I mean, you as a competition? No. <laughs> No, he was his own deal, so it was like, uh, I wouldn't even, it wasn't like a competition, it was just, it was more, that was acknowledged, like I knew, I knew how much better he was than I was, so it was more, you were just using him as like inspiration, like I gotta push myself harder and something like that, so the fact that, you know, he's not gonna put out any more specials, you know, so even if I didn't know him just as a comic, it's just yeah. fucking devastating. You all should check out the special, all in the room. Right? Yeah, and then also Mr. P is his uh, CD, so if you guys can do that, that would be awesome. I think it's our time with Phil. This is part one. And we're going to have this little, little holiday theme for you guys. Uh, we're going to have a little holiday pageant. Bill, will you st stay for uh, this? Absolutely. Who walks out on a holiday pageant? <laughs> That would be evil. That would be un-American. I always wonder, like, you don't have kids, but I like, I want to imagine you, like, having kids. Like, I... But well, you feel free to imagine it. I'm not gonna stop you. I'd love to have a kid. I'm at the point I think I finally, I think I'll finally have a kid. You don't have a kid, though, when you're in your 60s, though, right? Do you feel like it would creep up into that age? No, I wouldn't do that. I so what's the cutoff, then? Like, it's probably a few years. You gotta... I would say, uh, well, I mean, there's all kinds of ways you can do it. You can adopt a kid. That'd be a nice thing. You don't to want to adopt a kid. You don't want to adopt a kid, you selfish prick. Don't put that on me. <laughs> yeah. No, it's awful. It's a great thing to do. It's just It's like good. picking up litter. It just like, makes it, makes it better. Now, you fucking hear the asshole. <laughs> Look, no, you know what it is? These kids, if they're not raised right, then they're gonna be the person like God knows what they do when they fucking get out in the world and they can start drinking and shit. They're all angry. You know, you get them, you fucking adopt them, you know. I just have this fear. It's if like you... adopting a, a fucking dog. Was that a better? Well, I think once you adopt a kid, there's gonna be a point where he realizes you're not his dad and he's gonna start like punking you or something. <laughs> well, fucking move out then, douchebag. Yeah. Well, Do you take your last name back too when you kick him out? With this, this hypothetical, hypothetical situation, completely hypothetical. The hypothetical situation. I would just, I would just let him fucking start screaming at me, knowing that it has nothing to do with me. He's really mad at his real dad, and someday he's gonna wake up and be like, you know what, this guy's a good shit for taking me in. <laughs> That's the mature way of doing it. Now if I've had a couple of drinks, I would probably engage in the argument. And I would probably say something horrible like, Well, maybe that's why they didn't want you!
Um, we're only gonna sit back and we're all just gonna get a little holiday spirit in. Carlos Kiko, you're gonna introduce these guys? Oh, absolutely, no eggnog. Can, can we get some eggnog? Can we get a drink for Bill? Can we get a drink for Bill? Please, let's be professional. Jameson on the rocks, please. That was a quick response. <laughs> Alright guys, our first character in the Willie Hunter pageant he is straight from the North Pole. Please give it up for Elf Shesky. How are you guys doing, huh? It's an honor being here. I am an elf. I'm also Jewish. I'm a Jewish elf. A lot of people don't know this about elves, but they're all Jewish. <laughs> You're the only people willing to work on Christmas. <laughs> these aren't socks, these are tattoos. <laughs> A lot of people wonder, they're like, why? Why don't Jews celebrate Christmas? <laughs> the answer is we're busy controlling. <laughs> oh, that one get a bigger laugh for sure. You guys have been terrific. I'm a Jewish elf. Thank you very much. Guys, give it up for Shelf Anstey. Christmas. Seven families of elves. See that? You guys should have follow-up questions. Guys, give it up for our second character. Give it up for a Mexican Jesus. Mexican uh, Christmas Feliz Navidad. Um, yeah, we, we celebrate by uh, regifting uh, old shit. Uh, sometimes you might get some new shit. Uh, from Goodwill. Uh, and one thing's for sure, there will be a badass Christmas tree. Uh, very well trimmed. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and the tree's okay, no presents, but the tree's be alright. You love her Mexican Jesus. Mexican Jesus? What do you think about him, Bill? I'm not buying it, his hair was too short. <laughs> Jesus had long hair, he's a fucking dirty hippie from Woods Woodstock, right? <laughs> oh, hey, Seuss. All right. <laughs> All right, our next character, she was a real whore back in the day. She blew half the disciples. Pontius Pilate, please give it up for Mary Magdalene. <laughs> I got caught blowing Jesus, so they made me wash his feet. <laughs> you guys, you never saw Mary Magdalene in wedges? <laughs> Messing up my pedicure for you guys. Those yeah, are nice so, shoes you have on there too, Mary. You. They're my wedges, thank you. <laughs> you like them? They're cute. They're sexy. They're almost like stripper pumps, you know? Yeah, I was a stripper back in the day. Oh, that's right, you were a whore. <laughs> I was a whore. <laughs> she worked the pole at the Last Supper. I did. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't going to let me cook it. They didn't trust where my hands had been. So, I'm Mary Magdalene. Happy holidays. This is like the ding-dong Christmas pageant. So. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for having me. Give up for Mary Magdalene. Be going all Catholics right after the like, show. You look like Ginny from Forrest Gump. <laughs> no. <laughs> no, she's she fucked the retarded guy. I thought more people have seen Forrest Gump. <laughs> I saw the porn of Forrest Humps. <laughs> just like the next person. That. Well, this next person is just going to give us this. This is the second Jew on the dais. Please get up for Rick Glassman. 
reading this? Just go ahead. I don't want to do this if you don't want me to do this. Is this part of the stick? No, I, I'll do it. I'll just... Okay. Is there something in the Ponzi Weber ensemble? <laughs> Uh, introduced me as such. You had, I was asked to come out here just to explain the meaning of Hanukkah. Please. And I, um, okay. Uh, Two thousand years ago, before we had iPods, before we had iPhones and everything, uh, there was pretty much it was just oil, uh, oil and presents. And um, the Jews and the Pharaohs, uh, the, all the all the, uh, the the Egyptian Pharaohs. Are you a little nervous? I'm a little nervous. Yeah, I came out here. You weren't sure if I wanted to do this, and I read a lot about it. And I'm trying to put it all into like a minute. Um, the, the Jews and the Egyptian pharaohs were going to the desert to, they were looking for the Americas and, which is where we get actually today, America, yeah, the name America, and um, this is every day they celebrate it for just all of it. Does that sound legit? Huh? So, how, how many days are there? Eight. Eight. Eight days. Is it going on right now? It starts on Sunday. The it 25th. On it's the, uh, the, the, uh, the Hebrew calendar, the 25th of Kavol. Every, every year it's translates into the end of November or mid, mid to early, or the end of December. Are you talking about Hanukkah or the sale of Bloomingdale's? <laughs> uh, I don't have to do that. I don't know why you guys are, are treating me like this. We love you, dude. They, uh, they, they told me to be anti-Semitic. <laughs> You have, you, all you've done is sit down and ask questions about, about the holiday, which is a, which is fair. You've made fun of the way I look, and he called me a. You're the best looking guy. Called me, called me. I didn't think you were being very anti-Semitic. No, I said that they told me to be anti-Semitic. Well, do, you should do it. Huh? You should do it. Do you want to say anything? <laughs> do you want to be anti-Semitic? Yeah, a lot of people don't want to be. Would you like me to be? Yeah. I would. What well, area well, would you like me to be anti-Semitic about? <laughs> oh, my face. Uh, are you talking about like geographically or like on me? I don't know. Ohio. Oh, yeah. Ohio. Yeah. Oh, in Ohio? Yeah. Hey, what's up with the Jews in Ohio? Oh, I know, no, no, no. Oh, no. Jesus Christ, if I you. see one more Jew in Cincinnati, oh my god. It was a request. <laughs> Guys, give it up for Rick Lassie, everyone's favorite Jew. Second favorite Jew. Second favorite Jew. Alright guys, this pageant's moving along at breakneck speed. Right. Now, this is breaking news guys, a lot of people thought there were originally three wise men. Turns out there was only two and they're here right now. Give it up for the two wise men. Two wise men everyone. Woo! Come on guys, the two wise men. They flew all the way from Egypt. Thank you so welcome. Oh, here they go. I didn't drunk. Boom shakalaka! Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm a wife in the land. None of my bags back to the little beach. Good. <laughs> <laughs> they be stealing all my shit. They steal all my books. They steal everything. They're damn joke. And you know what they put your damn property in. I don't need no car loss men steal your opinion stealing my bits. Yeah, right there. Some of your best. Here goes some of my best Christmas jokes. Christmas? No, I'm just. I no, you, we you know. don't even have, We tell stories and the truth. Because we tell some wise men. People think they're three wise men, but it don't take two men to fuck. Listen, that you guys be seeing, that picture that you be seeing of Jesus Christ, that is not Jesus Christ. Nope. Who, you might wonder who it is, and I'd like to know it too. It's some homeless white dude that they put on This is an original wise man. Is this the guy from Bass must be crazy? Well, you look like you Earl look like a lesbian. Earl look like a lesbian. He looks like a bull guy. He kind of looks like her not my attention. If y'all believe that Jesus Christ, you wrong. You're wrong. And yes. Looks like even older Stevenson Lisa is actually George Washington dressed up like a And if you don't think that, if, if that Mona Lisa look like George Washington. Like it looked like little Esther wearing some clothes she got it. Looking like a Mona Lisa, looking like a dude. <laughs> hey, dude, how much are you selling that book for? Dollar. That book, not no, this book worth book two dollars. We're more than you know. I got mail holding pages. Right. The wise man, I'm wise not to steal this book. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Who 
get married. It's none of my business to get married. Marry your mama if you want to. It's none of my business. Well, let me ask you another wise man. What you think about the Virgin Mary? Wait a minute. Just don't fuck with my record collection. <laughs> that makes sense. It's not the answer. The Virgin Mary. She gave birth to Jesus. She gave birth to Jesus. But Jesus Christ is not white. Uh-oh. <laughs> because there were no Europeans in that part of the world during that time. And if that's the case, black folks quit saying that Martin Luther King is the first black man to have a holiday. No, it wasn't on his birthday. No, it wasn't. It was Jesus Christ. Hey. Part of Christmas. Hey. Yes. Uh, the way it's like, bro. Like, what is 12 inches long and white? Not a damn thing. I know one, I know one of the wise men that would like to prove you different. Who? Me. Ladies and gentlemen, the two wise men. Merry fucking Christmas. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for fucking tough. I don't even want to do this again. Someone get that guy a deal, will ya? Did that remind you of the hot days, Bill? What do you think about that whole ordeal? Yeah, that was great. It's detailed. That it just, it's fucking unreal. It should have been a short film. All right, guys, we're gonna keep it going. <laughs> Cover the Jews, the Mexicans, the blacks, the homeless, the gays. Then we're gonna get to the Italian side of the Christmas story. Please give it up for Sandro Ercolano. Luigi. <laughs> <laughs> Luigi. It's me, I'm Mario. Are you on the Emperor Lord? <laughs> <laughs> You're like adorable. Thank, thank you very much. I'm very nervous to be here right now. It's, uh, it's like Ellis Island Italian. I'm a little nervous because I was backstage and somebody told me there was a black person around. And because it's a joke, I'm making it. How do you say? How do you say? Black person. How do you say? What? Why do I feel like an N word is going to pop out pretty soon? You won't hear it from me. My tongue, I'm sorry. Scusate, per favore. My, the Italian background in Christmas is a very, a very long strand. The back goes back to the Last Supper. Christmas time they had the lobster fra diavolo, which is a lobster from the devil. Which is a, a little, if you look at me, a little ironic because you have a Judas and you have Jesus Christ. You know, all, all the apothecaries were out there. All, all of them were sitting down, they eat the food, and then Judas, motherfucker, Judas, he's not shot. He's too f he said to Jesus, he says, you know I can't eat a fish. You know I can't eat a fish. You're gonna fucking, you pay for this one. You pay, and then now we know the story came out with Benedict and uh, America. Which is, in this country, if you think about it, is named after an Italian person, America Vespucci, which is Italian for go to America and exploit it. Christmas. <laughs> it's an Italian Christmas right there. What, do you, what kind of dishes do you make? Uh, yeah. uh, my mother makes, uh, she makes a traditional turkey, but she stuffs it with lasagna. <laughs> inside. It makes it, it, it absorbs into in, in the turkey and then you don't fall asleep so quick. And then she makes uh, lobster fra diavolo, which I mentioned earlier in the Last Supper, just to keep everything, you know, the uh, family. <laughs> familia, la familia, eh? <laughs> I'm a, little, I'm a little nervous. So are we. Un poco, un poco. What are you looking at me for? I don't know anything about Italians. I gotta catch a, I gotta catch a cab to drive. <laughs> I gotta catch a cab to drive. I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not licensed yet, but I'm gonna catch the American dream, right? Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Guys, give it up for Sandro.
like that before? Uh, no, I haven't. No. Maybe like a video game. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, let's keep it going. Alright guys, we covered Hanukkah, Christmas, now we're gonna get the take on Kwanzaa. Uh -oh. Please give it up for Mr. Ian Edwards. This is like the fifth worst fucked up thing that somebody's ever asked me to do. <laughs> I'm back there going, what the fuck is going on? Really, I allow you to call me three times a year and you use wasted one of the phone calls on this shit? Yes, you can. It's Kwanzaa, and you take back shit at Kwanzaa. <laughs> Kwanzaa's not such a given holiday. Uh, I'm trying to still get past the Boone thing. Uh, it's Boone, and first of all, Boone sounds like Barry Diamond's impression of a black guy. <laughs> yeah, so. And then you got another white guy doing him while he's standing next to him. Right? That shit ain't weird. <laughs> but I'm, I'm here to be festive and talk about Kwanzaa. And it's a beautiful holiday. Uh, uh, black people love to celebrate it. Uh, Kwanzaa first happened when uh, uh, the first... Kwanzaa's the name of the first black guy. <laughs> <laughs> to not get tarred and feathered after sleeping with a white woman. <laughs> Excuse me, tar and feathered? Yes. It's, it's, a, it's a, from the twenties. Like before that, before Kwanzaa, like if a black guy smiled at a white woman, they would hang. Uh, but Kwanzaa actually successfully slept with several white women in December. I didn't know this it. about Kwanzaa. I didn't, but like we cloak it up. You know, because we don't really want white people to know why the fuck we celebrate. <laughs> but basically, like, in December, that's what black men do when they sleep with all white women. Just to celebrate the spirit of Kwanzaa. That's, that's a great holiday, I think it is, because we make it snow on women. <laughs> Just make it snow. Uh, so, that's Kwanzaa. Uh, really? Why not? Why not? <laughs> you had a good show going. You interviewed Bill Burr, great guest. Yeah. And then Boom and Tebow. All right. <laughs> Happy Kwanzaa, everybody. <laughs> Ian Edwards, guys. Kwanzaa in the house. Did you know that about Kwanzaa? I thought uh, Kwanzaa was a sequel to Pootie Tang. <laughs> <laughs> you, did, did, you, did, did you write on that movie or you were just like it? Pootie Tang? No, I never I love that movie, though. That's it. That's one of those movies. The more you watch it, the funnier it gets. I love it. No, I didn't write on it though. Did you really push that out? Huh? No, I was actually. I mean, in a complimentary way. What happened to us? We were having such a fun time. I just had last two exchanges. Is it the Jameson? I think it is. Okay. <laughs> hey, can I get a Jameson on the rocks also? I want to be where this guy's at. Let's continue. All right, guys. We brought a lot of people up here. How fucking long is this? <laughs> people coming next. What's up with Scandinavian? A very Scandinavian fucking Christmas. We got it. There's different ethnicities out there. I love the fuck of God. Bring out the headliner and wrap it up. The energy is just falling off the fucking wayside. There's people milling around. The second there's milling around, you gotta bring out the you gotta bring out the big gun. We are, we're just building. This is a long ride. It'll all be worth it for the last guest, I promise. There was a way to walk out of this without being rude. <laughs> Jameson on the rocks, please. Two Jamesons, guys. We're going to bring out a guy who can't stand Christmas. Give it up for the Grinch. Tell me, Grinch, 
thank you, everybody. Uh, yeah, they, 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 there's no makeup. You're exactly right, Bill. Um, it, it turns out the production uh, quality here at the Willie Hunter show isn't exactly up to par. But I wore all green. Anyway, it's supposed to be funny because the Grinch is a hateful guy. I'm uh, very unlikable. <laughs> That's not true. You guys like him, right? Oh, no, they don't like him. Right. They, they, they have to do that because I'm part of your show and I'm, we're all up here beating a dead horse. Uh, I mean, the joke has now become like, we're, we're like, I mean. You know, like, once the joke ends and you just keep joking, then a joke comes back? No. If you just keep wishing, I guess that makes it true. Um, that's Hollywood for you. Just keep selling it and everything will be okay in the end. But that's what the Grinch would say, right? I mean, I'm not the only person that hates this season of Whitney. Am I right, people? I, I mean, I just can't believe she forgot to took out the bag of stuff out of the turkey before she cooked it. <laughs> just the goddamn wackiest thing I've ever seen. I mean, you had me season one. I was locked and loaded. I saw those billboards and I'm like, you know what? This is the future of comedy. You had me convinced, but season two's taking a turn. <laughs> is Whitney here? Is my career over yet? <laughs> I think I just got to X out of show business for making one Whitney joke. But that's what the Grinch would do. It's not you, it's the Grinch is saying this. Right, it's exactly. It's, it's an a, incredible it's a character. acting performance, what you're seeing here. This right. isn't his, this man and his thoughts. This is what the Grinch would say. It's the Grinch. Even Bill knows that Whitney runs this town. That's why he's defending me right now, everybody. If you don't know what's going on, he's saving my career. And I appreciate that. No, I just know she's tall enough to step on you. That's true. She is. She is that too. God damn it. She's just got it all going for her. Anyway, uh, Earl. Hey, what's up, man? Are you talking about Whitney Houston? Yes. <laughs> you have a TV show. Well, uh, I want to thank you guys for letting me be part of the Christmas pageant. I'm, uh, I've been Tony Grinchcliffe. Come on, guys, give it up for Tony Grinchcliffe. Can you take one of the cat presents, too? Like you're one of the Grinch. You bring it to character. All of them. Yeah, you take all of them. No, not all of them. Just not Okay. <laughs> Why that dirty napkin? <laughs> Oh, guys, listen, I've just been given some breaking news. Oh, my God. Seriously, I haven't been this excited since Porky's 3 came out. Um, and they were all in their 30s, still in high school. Guys, there's only two more guests, and then the second half of the show starts. Do it all over again. Do it all over again. It's gonna be wild. We're gonna have a duet right now with Ari Shafir and Jessica. This is the hula hoop girl, everyone. Michelle Singleton, the hula hoop girl. She's the reason Burr's here, so give it up for her. Her and that fucking hula hoop. Oh, no, we're gonna... We'll be okay. We're just gonna sing a little, quick little. We're gonna sing Christmas songs. Nice yeah. Christmas. <laughs> Let's have some class. This is a Christmas show. This is a I really can't stay. Baby, it's cold outside. But baby. This evening has been so very nice. My mother will start to worry. What's going on? This is what the hell? What are you, an NBA player? <laughs> you playing the Lakers? Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah, well, I guess that was... The... Is it still going on? Going on? <laughs> They're really acting. All right, guys, we are down. I know everyone's happy right now. We are down to our last character. <laughs> Come on, guys. I mean, this is it. He's excited. He's excited. 
You may recognize them, you hate them, you may have seen them in your dreams after you did something wrong, after you teabagged an underage girl or something. <laughs> Give it up for Satan. Hi, right, guys. I'm Satan. That's how Good I to see, see you again, Earl. Hey, Tell Robert Schneider I said, what's up? He doesn't return my calls. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. I got some good news and some bad news. The bad news is you all died on the way to the comedy store, and you are in hell. And we will be repeating this farce on and on for perpetuity. The good news is Michael Jackson's coming out to sing you a song. Because he's been burning down here for about three fucking years. And I don't feel like we punished him enough. Alright, All right, well. Hey, Satan, you know you can adjust that mic stand so you don't have to carry it up there. <laughs> just, you just said, screw the evil lover there. I don't know what to say, Satan. Woo! <laughs> wow. You, you just served Satan his lunch. I doffed my cap to you. We have found uh, someone more I was honoring. I was honoring you, Satan. I'm not trying to like get on your bad side there, right? There's no good side to get on. Not <laughs> <laughs> for Satan. You look, you look nice. Follow me on Twitter, guys. At White Male. <laughs> That's our big finish. Big finish. That's a big finish. Uh, he was dressed like Ron Howard. <laughs> Dressed like Bobsy, the other was dressed like Ron Howard, and I looked like Ralph Bell. I think that's the show. <laughs> that's the show. <laughs> oh man, Jesus couldn't be here now again. Oh. They couldn't be here. He's a sandwich. He's a sandwich right in the pool. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much. That concludes the Willie Hunter show. Get it up for everybody you've seen it all over again. Bill Burr, everyone. Bill Burr, guys. Glad to hear it. Uh, Andrew Finlay's uh, record and co-producer of this show. My name is Willie Hunter. I got your back. Enjoy your trip home, everyone. Guys, yeah, get up for Willie Hunter, man. Come on. <laughs> Sandy Ganto. The Willie Hunter Show. Promotional considerations have been paid for by the following. Dean Cuisine. <laughs> Fast Eddie Incorporated. <laughs> and viewers like you, thank you. Merry Christmas. Show.